Our text this morning is the, uh, the first reading in Revelation 14. Seems an odd place to gather things for, for Reformation thinking, but uh, it's got its place like all things. Um, the, the text is there. I would like to just uh, take you back to most of verse 6. It says, Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead and with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth to every nation and tribe and language and people. This is our text. In the name of the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I am sure you have noticed as time moves on, rolling from past to future, it, there uh, seem to be uh, ongoing advances in technology and information and the ways we get information. And uh, well, that, that would normally be pretty good. The problem is the more of those things that you get and hear and experience, the more diverse thinking gets to be and the more opinions there are about things uh, some of them useful and some of them not so much uh, but there were things that we used to pretty much all think the same way about and that has changed a lot things like uh, what marriage is supposed to be what it looks like uh, how many genders are there it seems to come to mind uh, sexuality and how that's supposed to go along, uh, whether abortion is reasonable or not. I mean, all of those kind of things we've experienced in the past, well, 30 or 40 years, those things have come. Uh, most of that actually a lot more recent than that. Uh, it, it's hard to keep straight what's important. In, in John's day, and this revelation is to John, He's the one who saw what was being revealed. Uh, he saw these revelations, uh, and, and in his time, uh, religion was a very diverse thing. Um, it seems like that's only a recent development, but it's not. Uh, if anything, it has uh, only gotten more complicated, but uh, it was already a problem. So, you know, you had uh, the Roman Empire, which is where he's sitting, uh, and they had their mythology and their many gods and the Greeks had a very similar kind of theology about things uh, we would call mythology because uh, none of those deities ever actually showed their face anywhere except maybe in legend. The Egyptians had a similar kind of thing. The Persians as well, as well they had their gods. And in the middle of that mix you have Jews and you have Christians. Now that sounds pretty complicated to me. Uh, all of that going on at once and everybody sort of mad at each other and confused and uh, the, uh, actually information got around pretty good back in those days and, and, um, and, and it was a problem. So you're forced, if you're living in those times, to ask who actually knows what the truth is. Uh, you know, Christians and Jews would say God does, except the Jews weren't paying attention to the new part that Jesus was, uh, uh, but we know that God knows the truth and the rest of us are sort of lost. But as it turns out, uh, our God in Christ w had walked the earth. Uh, that's a unique, special thing. Uh, everybody else could not lay hands on their gods, but we actually had him in the world. He was human. He's not myth. Uh, even the Romans and the Greeks and everybody else would have said, yep, he was here. They knew he was here. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been fussing about it so much. But as, 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 as obvious as it was that Jesus was here, opinion about him varied as to the truth as much as anybody that was looking. Uh, people could get confused. Everyone said in some sense that they knew what he was about. Uh, but they mostly couldn't know unless somebody showed it to him. So here's what happens to John. He gets it showed to him. Most everybody else could only think about it and have an opinion about it, but the revelation from God himself is the only way you can know. And that hasn't changed at all. That is still true. It is still difficult. 
there's still a whole bunch of opinions. Uh, you can hardly get Christians of the same denomination to agree on everything about Jesus, uh, let alone other things. Um, you can't even count all the denominations that there are and spin-offs and uh, cultic sort of things and outright heretics that walk around and now I'm just talking about Christians or so-called. Uh, and then there are all the other religions that don't necessarily connect themselves to Jesus very well. So, uh, uh, and all of those things are there. So here we sit uh, and I know you probably ask the same questions I do. Uh, I've got answers here, uh, uh, but so have you. Uh, the question's got to be though, what's true? What's absolutely true? Because something is always absolutely true. Uh, you can look at your universe and you can see that something is always absolutely true. Now you may not know what that is. Uh, you may have an opinion about any particular notion, but ultimately what's true is God, whether anybody likes it or not. So how are you supposed to know what the truth is? Absolutely, with certainty. If people are so changeable, uh, and you know, this is uh, one of the arguments that comes against Christians so much, uh, and certainly it seems true that people seem changeable, although I think probably in my experience I would say they really haven't changed at all. <laughs> All the way back to Adam, everybody seems to be pretty much the same. Uh, how, how can what God said be unchangeable if everybody seems changing all the time, though? Uh, it seems like it should match up better with the way people think and the way times have gone. Of, uh, wouldn't that make it pointless if, if it only applied to the guys seven or 8,000 years ago? Uh, so it would seem, and so people have said, and so there has to be an answer for such things. Modern thinking says it doesn't apply anymore. You can't talk about marriage like you used to because it doesn't make any sense the way people think nowadays. So all the opinions about that, uh, whatever their meaning, there doesn't seem to be any truth or at least nothing you can hang on to. That's the way people are. <laughs> uh, Adam couldn't get through the part about don't eat the fruit. He had trouble with that. And, and Satan's opinion was, no, go ahead. Oh. But this is the way things are. That's the way things have always been. And they haven't changed at all because people are sinners. They've always been sinners. They're not going to stop being sinners. And there are sinners everywhere. Even as you sit here right this minute, the whole room is full of them. So we are limited and we are foolish and we are opinionated. And it makes everything sort of difficult. It's true enough that when you find yourself turning to people to find the truth, you're going to be disappointed a lot because it doesn't work that way. The truth is not really uh, invested in us, not, not the pure truth, not the complete truth, not the utter truth. Uh, it's not in us like that because sin can corrupt anything for people. So even if you heard it perfectly, uh, sometimes if it's coming from you, you might get messed up on it. But even without faith in Christ, uh, Romans 1 says you should be able to tell that God is out there, that there is actually truth, because, uh, well, anybody can find truth in the orders of creation. That's the way it talks. If you go look at the heavens, go out at night and look at the sky, or uh, we'll go in the daytime when the sun and the moon are hanging around or whenever it is you can see what's going on up in the sky and you can see that there is order, that everything moves the way it's supposed to move. The stars are where they're supposed to be. They are moving the way they're supposed to move and uh, things are not crashing and burning all over the universe. God has created order there and beauty. It's the same with families. If you actually pay attention to the way he made human beings, you know how families are supposed to go. There is a natural order of that. And if you start wandering away from that, you find yourself pretty lost and it doesn't take very long. It's, it's not even complicated. You could go outside and look at that big old oak tree back in the backyard and see what miraculous genius God is, even for one simple thing that happens to sit in the yard. There's, it's pretty easy to see that there's God. 
that he's here, that he's in our lives, and that he's uh, affecting us, and, and that we are accountable to him. It's simple and obvious, that part. But that's not the gospel. That's not what the angel's talking about. The greater truth, the gospel, is the one with the angel in, in this reading. He, he's saying that there is an eternal gospel that is being revealed to John, that is chosen by Jesus himself to be shown. In fact, Jesus himself is the living, walking, truth, way, life. You've heard those words. He is the gospel. Just the fact that he was here. It's not just about knowing that God is. That's not gospel. That's just something, a piece of it. But it's more about Jesus, who is the living word. The promises that have been made that began in eternity. He was here fulfilling that promise. He is, as John says, the word. Incarnate, standing in the world, being the fulfillment of the promise. He is the truth that was ordered in eternity. God looked across time as he was creating and he knew what we would be and he knew that we would be corrupted and he knew that we wouldn't understand the truth and he planned for Jesus to come into the world and then he was here. Christ is that gospel. He's the embodiment of the truth that God is, that can be nothing else. He is here. Uh, he is the eternal plan. He is the good news that is shown just by his mere presence among us. But he's so much more than that because he didn't stop by just being here and speaking and uh, serving. He came also the son of God into the world to save you from your sin. To save you from the wages of sin, which is death. To save you from the hellfire of condemnation, because that was surely where we would go. And he is the embodiment of that promise fulfilled. When he says it is finished, it is finished. Jesus died to accomplish the very things that God designed eternally for you. For you, not, not just for just anybody, but for you personally. Because he knows you that well. He knows that, uh, <laughs> that you're opinionated. He knows that you think about things and then it gets broken and messed up. He knows your weakness. He came to be the truth that you could look at and say, that's the truth. That you could be his disciple according to the good news, the gospel that the angel brings that is eternal. It never changes. It begins and ends in time with Christ in the center of all things with you to be salvation, to be the fulfillment of his eternal design. There is no other true gospel but Christ. Even this word, when it's spoken by a Christian, when someone tells you that your sins are forgiven, they've been authorized by Christ to speak those things, to shed his grace on you. He can do that, any Christian can do that, because God gave us Christ. And Christ is the embodiment of that forgiveness. And so when you speak God's truth, when you speak the gospel that the angel's talking about, the eternal one, when you speak that as it has been revealed to you, it is God's own and it is truth. <clears throat> Sometimes people wander around wondering if the gospel is for them. And before, if you've been wondering if the gospel of Christ forgiving you is truth, it is for you, then you just got to listen to the angel. Uh, Christ's eternal word is for, what does he say? Those who dwell on earth. That's you. You probably noticed where you live. And, and more than that, he says it's for every nation and every tribe and every language and every people, as it turns out, that's you too. Uh, he was thinking about you when he planned these things. He has desired you from before he made you. He has planned for you from the beginning of time to the end, and Christ is the embodiment of that grace for you, 
All of this is for you who believe these things. The Reformation is about that very thing because the gospel has never changed. As it began, it continues, and it will never change all the way to the end. It is for all of you, Christ and forgiveness and eternal salvation. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.